All right, joining us now from Singapore is legendary investor and CEO of Roger Holdings, Jim Rogers. Jim, great to have you back on the show. Thanks for joining us. I'm delighted to see you, Michelle. Jim, some stark words from Russia's former finance minister, Alexei Kudrin, today. He's warning that the country is entering a, quote, full-blown economic crisis and will enter recession next year. Now, if oil remains at its current levels, the country's GDP is forecast to contract by about 4%. And even if oil rises to $80, Russia's economy is expected to shrink by 2%. Now, Jim, last time you and I spoke, you said that you are bullish about Russia. Is that still the case? I was bullish about the rush, buying Russian stocks, is what I said, uh, and I still am. Yes, I'm looking for, for Russian stocks to buy as this happens. As far as the economy is concerned, Michelle, of course, the ruble's down over 100% in, in, in just a few months. That's going to have dramatic effects. Venezuela isn't going to be in, in recession, too. Iran, is that because of sanctions? No, of course not. It's because we've had a dramatic collapse in the price of oil, and anybody who's reliant on oil for their economy is going to suffer. Okay, Jim, so obviously Russia's taking a big hit from oil, but you're still positive that buying some Russian stocks is a good strategy. What sectors in particular are you interested in? What sectors do you think are going to be able to withstand oil decline and the impact of these sanctions? Well, anybody that's dealing is selling in, for instance, I'm a director of a Russian fertilizer, large Russian fertilizer company, one of the largest in the world. They sell in U.S. dollars. Their expenses are in rubles. This helps people like that. Now, obviously, there are very, not many people in Russia that have those particular circumstances. But if you can find companies like that that are selling their products in U.S. dollars, their expenses are in rubles, my goodness, this is a bonanza for them. Uh, I'm looking at companies that are not oil related uh, because there's plenty of ways to invest in oil, but trying to find, to find companies such as Foss Agro, which is the company I've become a director of, which have those particular circumstances. All right, well, Jim, let's focus a little bit about oil. Uh, last week, President Putin said that uh, an alternative plan needs to be made and that the country's economy needs to diversify away from oil. It's something he's been saying for a while now. Is this a feasible reality? Can Russia diversify from oil? What are the alternatives? Well, Russia can. Russia's got vast alternative uh, assets. They've got huge agricultural prospects, metals, minerals. Like, look, at the, look at the map. You'll see they've got just about everything, and they probably have things they don't even know about yet. You look at somebody like Venezuela or Iran or Mexico, it's much, much, much more difficult for them to switch quickly from oil to something else. But even for Russia, Michelle, you don't do this overnight. This is, this is centuries of, of history and, and economics that you have to change. Yes, Russia can change. Will they do it quickly? Of course not. No, it takes a long time. Well, in the meantime, Jim, the ruble has been hit hard. It's lost about 45% of its value. And Russia today had to bail out a mid-sized bank for about $500 million to save it from bankruptcy. Is this a sign that the ruble's decline is starting to put a real strain on the banking sector? Of course it is, Michelle, but Michelle, we've got huge currency moves all over the world. The Japanese yen is down over 50% in two years. The euro has collapsed, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, the ruble is certainly one of the big ones. We're going to have some more big, big dislocations in the world economy because when currencies, major currencies, the Japanese yen, for instance, one of the most important in the world, when you have these dislocations, somebody's on the wrong side of the trade. I don't know who they are, obviously, but somebody's long and somebody's short, and the people that are long currencies, when huge moves like this take place, are in trouble. If you owe a lot of U.S. dollars, for instance, you're suffering right now, whether you're in Japan or Russia or Venezuela, wherever you happen to be. All right, well, let's stick with the currency theme. And Jim, many analysts, including yourself, have said that these sanctions against Russia could backfire and they could serve to create a stronger relationship between China and Russia. And China is saying it's willing to expand a $24 billion currency swap program to help Russia. Uh, what do you think about that? 
it's just exactly what I've been saying to you before. This is pushing Russia to Asia and Asia to Russia. In the end, it's not going to be good for the United States. And I'm an American. I don't particularly like seeing this happen. We're making a mistake in Washington. But yes, now you see many, many countries flocking to Russia because the Russians have to have somebody to help them. And China is the one with all the money. And the border, they have long borders together. They have trading possibilities. Now, this is certainly helping Russia and China get closer together to the detriment, long-term detriment of the United States. So, Jim, is the dollar's position as a global reserve currency possibly endangered? Well, I own the U.S. dollar. As I told you before, I own, mainly own the renminbi and the U.S. dollar because there's all this turmoil taking place, Michelle. And so many people are looking for a safe haven. Now, they think the U.S. dollar is a safe haven for historic reasons. It's not a safe haven. It's a terribly flawed currency. But I own it because everybody else thinks it's a safe haven. So the dollar is going to go higher and higher for a while. Now, eventually, of course, reality is going to sink in. And I hope I'm smart enough to sell my dollars in time. But the U.S. is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. That kind of currency cannot maintain its position as the world's reserve currency indefinitely. So many people are already looking for alternatives, something to compete with the U.S. dollar, and it's going to happen. Well, Jim, uh, you've been a vocal opponent of uh, the Fed's policy against the dollar. And uh, we spoke a few months ago, and you said the single best piece of advice you could give me was to buy a farm and have children. Are you still sticking with that? Absolutely. I mean, you cannot imagine, Michelle, how much fun children are. For decades, I was against children. I felt sorry for people who had children. I was totally 100% wrong about children. They are fantastic, the most fun you can imagine. And you should definitely have a farm because agriculture is going to be much, much, much more profitable in the next 20 or 30 years. All right. We'll leave that on those uh, pearls of wisdom from Jim Rogers. Thank you so much, Jim Rogers, CEO of Roger Holdings.